welcome or welcome back to Beauty Bees into my monthly haul for August. We're actually going to start out with some rollover items from July. I included these in my July spending. I mentioned them at least in passing in the July video, but they weren't here yet. They were still on their way to me when I filmed. So let's start with those. First up, we have a Sephora order. So the only like purchased paid for piece of that Sephora order was a Sephora Favorites lip set. And I've made a full video on that. I will have it linked up in the cards. I think it's on this side. I can never remember which side it goes up on. But if I'm pointing in the wrong direction, you know why. The star item for that from that set for me has been this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium lipstick. First of all, packaging, gorgeous. This item costs more than the cost of the set, and I love it. I have worn this probably six or seven times. I've been wearing it like twice a week. And it is a matte lipstick, so it's not going down very quickly, which makes me really happy because I want to have this around for a really long time. It's absolutely lovely. So that was the paid for item and then it was Sephora so there were some little freebies. I got some kind of hair set. They had some little hair samples and I've actually used up a few of them. There will be some of these hair samples in my empties. I'm not gonna bother to talk about them here and in my empties video. Just come back for my empties video, I don't know, two days, three days from now, they'll be in there. But let's talk about the ones that I still have. We're gonna go through these really rapid fire because I haven't used them yet. So we have the Olaplex number no. eight Bond Intense Moisture Mask. This is a 20 mil size, which I usually get about three to four uses per ounce with things like hair masks. So two, maybe three uses. That'll be good. I think that'll be enough to give me a good idea of if I like this. We have the Moroccan Oil Hydrating Styling Cream. Okay, I'm excited for that. I've actually been enjoying styling creams. I just assumed because this was Moroccan Oil, honestly, I haven't looked at these very closely at all, that this was going to be a sample of their hair oil which I'm a little more wary of. This I think I'll probably really like. Cool. And this is a 10 mil size. So again, enough to use it a couple of times. We have this Kerastaz uh, Wheel Original, so a hair oil, a, a Bumble and Bubble shampoo conditioner duo. This is in the Hairdresser's Invisible Oil. Also an Amica one, the Hydro Rush shampoo conditioner. That's it. And then this I've been using pretty regularly. I used it this morning and I'm really impressed. I've used it a few times. I didn't just use it this morning. This is from Day. I'm gonna, that's how I'm gonna say it anyway. Daye, Day. Their Cactus Fruit 3-in-1 Styling Cream. I have been realizing recently that my hair can take more product than I had generally assumed. I have pretty fine hair, I have pretty thin hair, I just in general. I don't have a lot of hair so I tend to feel like if I put practically any product in it like it's going to get really weighed down, that it's going to get greasy really quickly. Because my hair is a little bit lighter there's a clear color change when my hair gets greasy. I can actually see it getting darker and I, I don't like that look. Um, but this, I've been putting this on top of my leave-in conditioner and it's been working out really well for me. I use it before I blow dry my hair to serve as a little bit of a protectant and to keep things from looking too frizzy because sometimes after I blow dry things will just look really dry and fried. It looks like I've been like absolutely cooking my hair with a uh, straightening iron. I haven't, it's just 
my hair is dry and poorly behaved. This has been working out really well for me. And I've used it probably four or five times at least. And I'm a little less than halfway done with it. I think this will last me quite a while. And this is only two thirds of an ounce. So. The sun is going down faster on me than I expected. So I'm really sorry if the lighting just falls apart by the end of this video. I also, in that same Sephora order, redeemed 100 points for this Ilia eyeshadow. This is their uh, liquid powder matte eye tint, which I thought was interesting. I don't know that I've ever, yeah, I've definitely never had a matte liquid eyeshadow before. This is in cork. I found the product to be pretty nice itself. Like it looks nice on the eye, but like this smell, this just smells weird. It smells like wet dirt. It's, it smells like being outside after a rainstorm and not necessarily in a good way. So I blended that out. It is really pretty. It feels nice. There's no tackiness left over in this product. I think if you are someone who just puts on one matte eyeshadow in the morning and goes back to that same matte eyeshadow over and over and over again, that this could be a fabulous product. I just don't know if I'm, if I'm that person. Like, if I'm going to put down a matte shade, I usually am using it to blend out a shimmer that's on my lid or to blend out my crease. And I don't, I don't know if that's, this is the perfect fit for that purpose, but it is really pretty. I can't fault it for that. So that was Sephora. Let's really quick run through Polish Pickup. Polish Pickup is a monthly event where a bunch of indie nail polish sellers get together and they all release one polish based on a theme in July, which I mean, I've had these in my possession since probably like the last day of July or so, but I purchased these on like the first day of July. So these don't feel like a new purchase at all to me. Um, they had their rewind, which they're allowed to bring back a greatest hit polish. So I knew that I wanted to buy from that particular month because I suspected it was going to have sort of the best of the best. And so far, I've been really impressed with all three of these. Okay, now that I've built them up, let's talk about the polishes. First up, we have Lemming Lacquer's Ghosts of the Vault. And I swatched all of these, but not on that ring. Okay, so here is the swatch of this polish. It is a dark, like, blue-purple multi-chrome base, and then it has these almost glowing, shifty, flaky shimmers in it. It goes, like, green to blue to pink. They're very glowing, and they end up looking really ghostly. I've been referring to this in my head as my Madame Leota polish. She's the lady who's in the crystal ball, the floating green head in the crystal ball in the Haunted Mansion. I feel like this just suits that perfectly. And they were definitely going for a ghostly theme with the name Ghosts of the Vault. I'm, I'm really happy with this. I have worn this once already. It was not seasonally appropriate for late July, early August, but I loved every second of having it on my nails and I'm looking forward to wearing it again really soon. Next up was another Halloween themed polish. The uh, September theme for polish pickup is I think like haunted history. And I need to limit myself to like three polishes. I suspect that going forward, I'll probably buy from polish pickup like three times a year. July and September are probably always going to be among those three because rewind and Halloween are things that really draw me in. Okay, anyway, this polish is from Sassy Sauce and this is Glampire. Love vampires and this is such a cool polish. I have not worn this one yet, but oh my goodness, I'm so excited for it. So in the bottle, 
I think what you're seeing is sort of a ruby red that glows. I'm seeing a purple with like a lot of coppery shift to it. There are these red flakies. It looks super vampy, super shiny. I, I look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I want this on my nails. I'm gonna paint my nails tonight. They are looking really good, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm ready to switch things up. And I, I don't know which of the polishes that I have here to talk about today it's going to be, but this is definitely a contender. I'm so excited for this polish. The third polish that I got is from by Danny, or sorry, it's from Vanessa Molina. And this is the shade Heart and Soul. So a little bit of a different theme than the others. This is so pretty in the bottle. It is an orchid purple with a lot of flakies in it. And on the nail, this just glows. It is gorgeous. Here is the swatch. The swatch looks pretty. There is no way that my current lighting is doing this justice. It's like so pretty. I am thrilled with my first polish pickup experience. I am so excited about all three of these polishes and I think I'm going to get a lot of really good use out of them. They're just stunning. I'm so so happy with my purchase. So now that we're 15 minutes into my August haul video, let's actually get into some things that I hauled in the month of August. First up is a thing that I didn't actually purchase. I got this through Buzz Agent, which sends things out free for review, pretty similar to like influencer box boxes. This is from Kerastase. It is their 2% pure hyaluronic acid serum. And I've used this a couple of times so far. It is specifically in their blonde range. Yeah, their blonde absolute range. And I have no idea why this is supposed to be specifically for blondes. I think it would be fine for any hair color, but so far so good. Um, this is a hair serum. You put a ton in your hair. Their recommendation was to put seven doses is what they called it. Seven pumps of this in your hair. I tried that and I got to about four pumps and I was like, I, I can't do any more. I need, I need to put it in my hair now. And that worked out really well. The next time I tried five, that still worked pretty well. I think I will work my way up to seven. I'm just worried that if I'm using seven pumps every time I use this, which I think you're supposed to use this a couple of times a week. It doesn't actually say it on here, but I'm pretty sure I remember off the Sephora site that you're supposed to use this a couple of times a week. Um, I feel like I'm going to fly through this if I'm using seven pumps. Because I've only used it twice and I've already seen use. Anyway, so far so good. Hopefully this will show up in an empties video someday and I can give you some more complete thoughts. And now for my August purchases, I was actually a pretty good girl this month. I have no like face makeup to show. I do have quite a few nail polishes though. I kept running into clearance polishes and then today I received a like $5 Target coupon when I picked up a prescription at the CVS inside my local Target. So I bought a nail polish with that too, because I have no self-control. Anyway, there are a couple of items that aren't nail polish and we're gonna go through those first. The first is again from Target. This is the Whipped Almond Eau de Parfum from Mix Bar. I had never tried Mix Bar before and I was waiting actually probably almost exactly a month ago for a different prescription at the same target and I saw the mix bar uh, display and I decided to give things a sniff and this 
ended up coming home with me that day. It's not very expensive. I think this is $20, maybe $19.99. You know how Target prices work. And it is a very sweet, like, uh, almond extract scent. Really pretty. I think this will be fabulous for, like, early fall, sort of September, maybe that first half of October, when here at least it is still pretty warm. You wouldn't necessarily want to smell, I mean, I never really want to smell like pumpkin spice, but even if you like pumpkin spice, you probably don't really want to smell too heavy when it's still 90 degrees out. And I think that this fits into that little niche really, really well. It's sweet. It's not heavy. I don't think this would make you feel sick on a really hot, humid day, but it still feels fall. This is not the longest lasting perfume that I've ever used. I think this is a little bit longer lasting than a standard body mist, but it's not going to last all day. And that's okay with me because this was $20 for 50 mils and not $100 for 30 mils the way a lot of higher end perfumes are. So I'm really happy with that. A less exciting purchase, but a very necessary one was from Not Your Mother's. This is again from Target. This is the Refreshing Clean Freak Dry Shampoo. I used up one of these maybe two months ago and I was trying to work through my other dry shampoos and they just, they don't work as well as I need them to. The other dry shampoos that I have are really good as like dry texture sprays. They do add a little bit of grit to your hair, they make it feel fuller, and they do an okay job of making your hair feel not clean, but like passable for another day. This is really good for getting your hair to a point where it looks clean. It doesn't feel clean, but it looks it. And that is what I'm most interested in, in a dry shampoo. I don't really care about the texture spray element of it. I just need my hair to be passable for another day. I need to be able to go out in public and not have people think I'm some kind of grease monster. This is really good for that. And it's like $6 for this giant can, which is another win. Okay. Everything else we have to talk about is nail polish. So let's first talk about this one. I was so excited when I saw this at my grocery store. This is the Sally Hansen Sesame Street collab. And this is the Count polish. It is the one polish. Ah, ah, ah. And look at it. It has the Count right up here also has the count up on the lid. We have the Sesame Street label. In the past, I have purchased a couple of these Sally Hansen Insta Dry collabs where the cap was just a sticker. This is actually printed onto the cap, which is great because the stickers just end up getting mangled really quickly. And the polish is so cute. All of this collection actually looked pretty adorable, but I decided I was only gonna get one and it had to be the Count. The Count's a vampire. I am a statistician. Like, it had to be the Count, right? And it's a purple and it's the Insta Dry line, which is my favorite, probably my favorite line of nail polish. It's definitely the line of nail polish that I own the most of. But I didn't actually own a color that was super similar to this. I've worn it twice so far, once on my fingers, once on my toes. I'll put a picture up. I think I took a picture of my manicure with this. And here is a swatch on the nail ring. It is really pretty. I would put this as like a true lavender. It's like halfway in between being pink and purple but not the bright kind of purple that would make it more of an orchid. Really, really pretty. And this is like a passable polish in one coat. It looks great in two coats. The formula is so good. And I think 
that as it dries up just a little bit, as it gets just a hair thicker, as a little more air gets incorporated into it, I think it'll be a real one coat polish. I'm so happy with this. Next we have another Sally Hansen Insta-Dry. I actually just bought this today. I did swatch it, but I haven't worn it yet because I bought this like two hours ago. So this is uh, Sleekaboo. It's from their Lux Finish line. I own two others from this line. I have a blue one and a gray, but I've been on the hunt for this kind of hot pink shade. I used to have pink polishes, but I finished one, I gave one to my mom, and now I don't have anything this color, or at least anything this color in like a cream finish or a non-chunky finish. Made that sound so appealing, but like I have this Barbie pink, but this has a ton of pretty chunky glitter in it and it never really looks smooth on the nails. This is the Sally Hansen polish. I think it looks really pretty. I could see myself using this as a base for quite a few different other nail polishes. I could see myself wearing it by itself. I really like pink on me and I think this is going to be a good one. Then finally we have four SB polishes. I'm going to go through these pretty quick because my camera is warning me that I am running out of battery. So I have two standard SB polishes. I got all of these on clearance at Hy-Vee for $3 a pop. So I was having a hard time saying no to that, especially when I saw that Chinchilli was one of the ones that they had on clearance. I watch um, Mediocre Manny's and she talks all the time about this shade from Essie and how much she loves it and I can see why. It's a really nice taupe with like an extra drop of beige in it. I think it'll be really flattering. I think it'll be really easy to wear for all seasons. There is a swatch. It's very cute. And then a sort of similar type of color, Sand Tropez. So this is lighter and definitely more beige. It's also a little bit warmer. This I would describe as sort of a grout color. I mean, I guess you could have a grout color that was close to this as well, but I like it. Very neutral, nothing exciting really nothing that would ever jump out at me on the shelf. I don't think I would have pulled either of these had I been looking at a full Essie display because the bright pinks and the purples and the bright blues are going to draw me in more. But I think these will be really nice staples to have. They both seem like they'll be really flattering. I think I'll probably get a lot of use out of them. I was also able to pick up two of the Essie Gel Couture polishes. So I have a really light like minty green in Zip Me Up. And this is like a sprite color almost. It's a really light yellowy green shade with some shimmer to it. Totally different than anything else I have in my collection. I haven't had a chance to wear this yet. And I really have no, no idea how much I'll like it. It's a little weird, but I think it's a good kind of weird. And then another pink, this one is another shade that probably wouldn't have jumped out at me if I was staring at a display. This is Stitch by Stitch. It's a really pretty medium pink. I have a pretty similar shade to this from Sally Hansen, but it is a little bit more, has a little bit more white in it, and I find that it can sometimes look a little bit chalky. I think that the fact that this is just hair warmer and has a little bit less white in it is going to make this a little bit easier to wear on its own. And those are the items. I'll put up my spending breakdown. I'm very comfortable with the amount that I spent this month on beauty and really one of those items 
which accounts for, I want to say like 15% of my total spending was a necessity. I'm really happy with that. I suspect that next month will be a little bit higher. September, I will be moving and I'm planning to buy some soaps and things from Bath and Body Works. Additionally, I want to shop Polish Pickup next month. However, I think I'm doing really well with my beauty spending. I've definitely cut back. I'm definitely thinking a little bit more before I make my purchases. And I'm seeing that reflected in my collection. I notice that my overall collection is still growing slowly. But if you took out nail polish in particular, I feel like I've really reached sort of a point of homeostasis where I'm still purchasing things, things are still leaving my collection, but overall it's re remaining pretty constant and I'm very happy with that. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll check back for the next one. See you guys.